Here's some more in interesting quotes from that Secret Lives of Saints, the Canadian's bride, you know, child brides, and the lost boys in Canada's polygamous Mormon sect. So this is uh, about Mormonism, and uh, here's a story. Uh, following the speeches, there was a dance outside. Electric lights supplemented the m moonlight. Debbie had sewed a new dress from a bold Hawaiian print. Underneath, the 13-year-old wore a new crinoline on her first bra. On that clear night, under the stars, she danced for the first time with the man who would be her husband. As they danced, he recited the Song of Solomon in her ear. Uh, this is the, the the quote he quoted. Uh, they, they, thy two breasts are like two young rows that are twins. Da da da. Anyways, it goes on and on. It's Song of Solomon. The man who romanced her with her with biblical poetry was 53 year old Ray Blackmore. He was 18 years older than her father, <laughs> and her ste and and was her st um, step grandfather. The father of the two, her of uh, two of her stepmothers. Um, he had a dozen children older than Debbie, and twenty-one children who were younger, including. Anyways, this is crazy. This is all like in the. This isn't like in the nineteen nineties. You know, as if this isn't still going on. According to this book, The Secret Life of Saints, um, in the the Mormon Church, the. Uh, they they don't report uh, molestation or rape to the police, and uh, they're ter anyone who does is terrorized um, and threatened with eternal damnation if they would go to the th authorities, and uh, anyways in, in Utah. Is it's not like like unlike in Canada, there are there is no time limit for a victim to report a sexual assault, um, and in Utah, there uh, they have after four years, um, the the victim can't uh, report it. So it, it, even children uh, must report abuse within four years otherwise it's uh, the the person who did it can't be um they, they can't even report it so if you go to the police and say i was raped five years ago they can't re you can't report that in utah it has to be um within four years of the assault for them to so that's kind of interesting because it seems like they're they're really protecting the rapists in utah and because it, there's uh, the guys, are, a lot of them are left without wives because the heads of the church take all the women. Um, there, there's problems with um, homophilia. And uh, there's one story here they wrote. Um, Warren's nephew has alleged that beginning in 1980, when he first attended Alta Academy, he was report repeatedly sodomized and otherwise sexually abused by Warren and two other uncles. So his uncles were doing it. Uh, Blaine and Leslie Jeffs. Um, during Sunday church services at the academy, children were sent to the basement for two hours of religious training. On repeated occasions, Brent alleges that Warren and his brothers would come down, take him to the nearby lavatory, and take him to tell him to take his clothes off. When he was naked, Brent says one or more of his uncles would tell him it was God's will that he submit to them. They would then take turns sodomizing him, telling the boys that they were doing God's work and that it was all part of the effort to make him a man. And then there's extreme racism, like um, where if... if um, They they believe they, they teach that the the devil has always been able to bring evil onto the earth because of black people, and um, if you marry a person who has connections with a negro, you would become cursed, and uh, you can uh, see a black man with his white woman. Uh, great evil has happened on this land because the devil knows that if 
all the people have Negro blood, there will be nobody worthy to have priesthood <laughs> and stuff. It, it's really um, uh, anti anti Semitic teachings, and uh, uh, it's really their blonde hair, blue eyes. Like it's really like Nordics, which is pretty crazy. They they also believe that the Jews are. Um, Native Americans are Jewish, which is totally to off. Like it's t the, the Jews are the ones with the only really they they've been really strict about their ancestry since ancient times, and they're one of the only people, one only groups on earth that have been like that. And so it's it's completely obscure, and it's Mormonism is just a bunch of hodgepodge of obscure lies put together under one banner and there's a lot of like the great uncle marries his great nephew or whatever like um uh, niece i mean uh in the mormon church and so there's a lot of uh, abnormalities in birth or the, the gene related deficiency um seems to affect like it, it seems, to, there seems to be a lot of inbreeding, so there seems, seems to be a lot of problems with that in the Mormon Church. Um, and uh, this is an interesting comment. Uh, it's more likely the orgy of cross-border bride trading was fueled by Ruland's concern for children. Not, not he, they were trying to um, uh, trade with Canada for just get more into their gene pool, and. Uh, was not fueled by Roland's concern for children, but for his desire to reward his loyalists, because they give gifts of women to people who are loyal to the church. And um, fundamentalist saints don't put st stock in modern medicine, especially when they're not directly affected. If a child is born with a physical or mental handicap, the male leaders blame the mother. She must not be a righteous woman. She must have sinned either by having sex with her husband while she was pregnant, by failing to be blindly obedient on his every wish or being unfaithful to him in some other way. Um, in fundamentalist Mormon communities, w women, the daughters of Eve, are almost always the root cause of sins and sickness. So, that's interesting. And Adam is... Um, the, he's God. He he became God when he ate the apple in the garden. <laughs> That's what they think. I don't know. It's bizarre. And this is interesting. It's like the U.S. government um, gave them money for one of the biggest airports in Utah. Um, started started received a startup grant worth one million dollars, and then it, it, this is back long time ago when a million dollars was a lot and then which followed by another million in 1990 in 1992 the runways were paved with for a hundred eight hundred thousand grants two years later um, another two hundred thousand and then the water system in 1995 150 thousand all by um, the government and it, it, they seem to be get a lot of government money and a lot of government help. Like uh, this book has been talking a lot about that. So there's something weird going on there. And of course, um, what's his name? Romney. Romney um, was running for president. Yeah, you know, like they they have they have some connections. With, I think the government because there's so much. Uh, like this, this kind of makes pedo pedophilia or whatever, uh, polygamy and just sexual whatever deviancies um, look okay, you know. And so I think the government kind of supports Mormonism because the government is a bunch of crazy people like that. So um, that that could be the problem. I could, I'm sure that is the problem, quite quite closely the problem. And uh, here it says, the mayors and city councilors are all LDS men. 
Uh, most, if not all, are polygamous. All of the law enforcement officers in the Twin Towns were polygamous until 2004 when Arizona appointed an uh, investigator to Colorado. So, da, 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 okay. Anyways, the point was like the 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 police, the city councilors, the mayors, they're all like polygamous. And so you have a, a situation where it's, it, it really feels like what's going on in Calgary, you know? Everyone has the same kind of, like, the people in charge. There seems to be just um, a pushing of people in charge if they have um, uh, anti, anti-religion, uh, anti-fundamental um, beliefs. Or, uh, um, mindset and then they get pushed in charge okay i'm finding some really great nuggets of information on mormonism and i just thought i'd mention them because it's really important i mean especially for alberta it seems i live in alberta i live in calgary alberta and there's edmonton alberta as well but then other than that they're all just like small towns mostly and uh anyways it it, it seems like utah is a major hub of, um, well, it's obviously a major hub of Mormonism, and then Alberta. Alberta is a big hub of Mormonism. And like the, the the polygamists in the U.S. when they were like told you can't be polygamous, or else you won't be able to vote and stuff like that, and they tried forcing them not to do polygamy. They they went to Canada, and actually um, they convinced the Canadian government to change the polygamy laws to say that, um, to make an exclusion of Mormonism. Anyways, so I guess, I, I don't know, I guess it's legal in Canada now. I, I really don't understand, but anyways, um, here, I'll just read this. Uh, before his murder, and this is uh, about Joseph Smith, the founder of Mormonism. Before, before his murder in 1844, Smith was not only the church's prophet, president, seer, and revelator, he was mayor of Nevovo, Illinois, uh, chief of police, no, chief of justice, uh, trustee of a private university and publisher of a newspaper. He was a real estate agent, a candidate for the president of the United States and lieutenant general of a 5,000 member militia that had modern rifles rather than the more common and cumbersome muskets of the Western pioneers. Okay, they had their own army. And this was like, you know, before he died, uh, and uh, he he did a lot of writing and whatever he. Um, it's funny. His first wife, um, Joseph Smith's first wife, Emma Hale Smith, was horrified by the revelation and the idea of polygamy. When rumors began to cultivate that Smith was a polygamist, Emma refused to believe them. She gave speeches insisting on her husband's monogamy. That's hilarious. Uh, expressing her revulsion towards plural marriage and defending Smith's good name. And this is an interesting fact. Back around like 1900, uh, the Canadian government was paying this guy, um, White was his last name, and uh was told anyways he um he was given money by the canadian government for recruiting people to immigrate to canada because they were trying to um make uh bring people to canada i guess uh they wanted people to farm the land and stuff and so uh he he would he was really good at it because he was he had a whole bunch of people in utah that wanted to come to canada uh, the mormons and so um by in um, 1901, Mormon, Alberta's Morm, Alberta, that's where I live, Mormon population had grown to eight, 6,891. That, that's 110 years ago. It's, it was at 7,000. We only have like 4 million people now, you know, and, and uh, by like 1911, there was 15,000, it's almost 16,000, 15,971 Mormons in Alberta. Now, I mean, I bet you the population of Alberta was probably, like, that must have been quite a chunk of Alberta, actually, back then. Really quite a chunk, like, a lar quite a large percentage. And um, so, it, uh, yeah, Alberta, and this, this book, it just talks about Utah, 
like Salt Lake City, you know, and all that. And then Alberta. <laughs> it's crazy. And uh, I, I, I knew Mormons were here quite a bit, but I didn't realize how much. And, um, uh, okay, this guy named Blackmore revealed his, un, uh, da, 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 da. He, he went into politics. And uh, the, also the Mormons, they, they vote as a block always to get somebody in, you know. And uh, if a Mormon's in, trying to get, they'll undividedly vote for the Mormon. Um, anyways, uh, during his last two, two terms in office, he persuaded the Canadian government to amend its anti-polygamy law. In uh, the 1952, update, in 1952, updating of the criminal code, the reference to the religious or plural marriages of persons commonly called Mormons was deleted from the definition of polygamy. So there you go. I don't know if they ever changed it back. I don't think so. This is also interesting because Joseph Smith, he was murdered. and um, But just before he was murdered, he was coming up with these weird theories. It sounded like he went off the, off the deep end, you know, in being like thinking he was um, so high and mighty and whatever. He could say anything and people would believe him or something. And um, anyways, he he believed that, um, let's see, where does it say? What, what Smith said was that Adam, who in the biblical creation story is forced out of Garden of Eden after Eve tempts him with the forbidden fruit, became God. Adam became God, the creator of heaven and earth. The idea was so controversial, even in Smith's time, that some believe it was the tipping point that led to the prophet's murder. So people killed him because he went off the deep end. Like, he was saying things so extremely bizarre. Like, he, um, he, he was always changing his ideas, too. And the thing is, I've read books about him, and he, he was known to be a storyteller. He was known to be just a liar before people started listening to him. So, obviously, he was just lying about everything. This is interesting too. It's not Mormons, but Freedomites. They were in Alberta as well, and they were um, kind of they they were different than the Mormons, but very similar in some ways, and especially in the way of polygamy, because they both embraced polygamy. And uh, like this, they um, this guy that led the led the group, Sima Holt, described. Um, Oh no, that that's the author of a book. Uh, Vergen was the leader. His name is. Um, he he kept a, a harem of maiden maidens. It was called, as a, and exercised the right to have sex with all brides on the wedding nights. So anyone in his you know of the freedomites who got married, he he had sex with the woman on her wedding night. Anyways, it wasn't Mormon to me, but they, they were both in Alberta, right? <laughs> they were all both around Creston, you know, like this is interior BC to Alberta. And, uh, you know, what's really interesting is that you go to interior BC and you don't find, um, black people. You don't find Chinese people. You don't find anything. You don't find Jewish people. You find blonde hair, blue eyes. I've noticed this. Absolutely. I mean, Calgary, you have more diversity, but if you go uh, southern Alberta, Alberta and like into your BC, especially like Kelowna and stuff, it's, it's <laughs> there's there's nobody. I mean, there's not even Chinese. There's not even like whatever. You know, it's it's quite funny. I mean, quite bizarre. I I, I was really surprised at that actually when I've gone through. The, like my grandma lives in Kelowna actually, and so I visit there sometimes, and I've noticed that. And it's interesting, they say that they, they ch started changing polygamy in the church um, because of a shortage of women more than anything. Like, the completion, uh, competition for women of childbearing age was so fierce that historian Ben Bistine, Bistline said it was commonplace for suitors to line up outside the door as soon as a girl reached her 13th birthday. By then, she was educated enough to cook and clean and old enough to bear children. Young girls, right, da, 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 trying to convince the girls that they had, anyways, it, it was like really, and then um, 
the man where does it say Oh yeah, it, it seems that as long as women have their choice of men, polygamy doesn't work, and it especially doesn't work for old men. <laughs> Funny, yeah, because women don't want to be in a polygamous marriage. <laughs> so I mean, it's just funny, you know, because polygamy doesn't work, and then, um, it, so they have to force women, women to do things, and that's what I've heard is that Mormons they push the young boys out. They push them out into, I don't know what they do. Maybe they kill them, <laughs> for all I know. You know, who knows? I mean, I, I wouldn't, the things I've been seeing lately, I wouldn't be surprised anymore. You know, if, if these old men, they kill the young boys somehow, get them knocked off or send them off to the military or something. Um, and because uh, they want the, the young women for, for uh, being their wives and stuff. It's bizarre. It's interesting because it seems that uh, the, in North America, the highest rate of young uh, underage girls um, getting pregnant from old men, the highest highest ratio of that is in the Mormon um, community. So, that w the, and uh, there's uh. You just imagine what it's like for a, a girl, usually around 12, 13, 14, she's told, okay, you have to marry this man. Sometimes they're 80 years old. And then at the age of like 16, sometimes they get married even before 16. And um, they're told, okay, you have to, you have to marry this guy. I mean, you know, even there, there's reports of like these girls they're like oh i don't i don't um i, I don't want to marry him i don't want to marry him at the pulpit and like when in the, in the ceremony they just say they refuse to say i do and all this stuff right i mean they're 14 years old or whatever right and then they get to their uh hotel room for their honeymoon type thing consummation and they're raped they're just flat out raped you know they completely refuse and they just are completely subjected to it crying the whole time and this is this is normal in this community okay and this is um i mean not all mormons are like this i suppose and it's supposedly you know they blame a lot on the priests because the, the priests are the ones that tell the girls who they're to m marry and stuff right but then even the priest families they're they they really they've been convicted there was one conviction of a guy the only conviction i can find in here is of a guy that he had um uh done things like in it actually well, he wasn't charged but his brother was but for other things but uh it, he he had been there had been allegations brought against him that he had paid five thousand dollars to a young boy to give him a blowjob and uh, when the allegations came out they searched his van and stuff like that and found a whole bunch of stuff but um very rarely has there been any like that was in canada like there haven't haven't been any convictions in utah at all no matter what like against the Mormon community they're very wealthy and if they if they were to make um, poly polygamous um, laws against polygamy and really in enforce them it would there just wouldn't be enough prisons they'd, they'd have to restructure the whole state because there'd be just so much like it, it's basically impossible at this point to just do that so it's, it's a crazy situation and these these are really real stories I mean okay this girl she was 14 and uh, this is her. T t this is what she said. I wasn't completely sure what he was saying, but I said, "Please don't do this." He just ignored me and came over and undressed me. The entire time, I cried and started to get very afraid. And he undressed me himself and made me stand there. This is in a motel right after they got married. I said, "Alan, I don't want you." This guy's name is Alan Steed. I went with to school with Mormons named Steeds with the last name Steeds here in Alberta. Anyways, I don't know if they're related, but. I wouldn't, uh, they have to be related. So I, I went to, anyways, it, Alberta's crazy. Um, Alan, I don't want, 
I, I don't know what you're doing, but I'm really uncomfortable with this, so please stop. I have never seen a grown man naked. I had never seen a grown man naked. I had never been naked in front of a man. He came over and went over to the bed. I said, I can't do this. Please stop. I was sobbing. The, the, my whole entire body was shaking because I was so scared. He just laid on me and on the bed and had sex. It hurt. She continued with her eyes closed as she tried to keep back the tears. I was so extremely hurt, she said. Pausing between each of those four words, I... I didn't understand why he had done that to me. In my felt, I've, in my mind, I felt it was evil. I didn't know he had done that sort of thing to how. Anyways, whatever. The the steeds that I went to school with, they had a huge, huge house, and there were. I remember she had like the girl in my class. She had like nine, eight or nine brothers and sisters. Like they all have huge, huge families. And, um, they're all really wealthy, as far as I can tell. And some of these, uh, like, the boys are kicked out of town. Some of them seem to be almost killed off, like, in accidents, supposedly. And, um, others join a militia in Utah or whatever, things like that. You know, it's legal. They, they have the loosest gun laws in the U.S., practically. And, uh, they've, they've, you know, created sort of a militia definitely like what you would call a militia and the boys can do that they can work in um the the companies sometimes they work in the companies for free they don't even get paid the boys you know and they're they're basically pushed out of town though so that um so that the young girls will marry the marry the older men uh, who already have like 20 wives it's unbelievable this is so bizarre and and then they pay the young boys for sex, you know, for like blowjobs or whatever. These guys, like, they're just really, really, like, this is this is crazy stuff. And you got to think the NSA is making a supercomputer for Utah, you know, a million square feet of supercomputer. They're putting in Utah to to basically control everything. Okay, so what wh what are they thinking, you know? I mean, Utah is run by a set of laws, right? And these laws are no good. And why are you making putting a computer in that, you know, a supercomputer to run the world from in a, in a state where the laws don't work? There was one court case where a man was charged with child sexual assault because she was so under, like she was, I don't know what age she was here exactly, but under 14, I guess. And, um, he noted that, uh, his, his underage bride swore in the court that she had impregnated herself with a turkey baster. Okay. So she had like sucked up his jizz and, and squirted it inside herself. That's what she said. That's what she said in court. Uh, you know, and then the, the prosecutor or whatever he says like that. The LDS that I tried to trust them, but they're liars. They're they're taught to lie to people be, like me because we are the monster, the beast. They're they're told that we are the bad guys, right? And so it's okay to lie to to um, the public around, you know, the general public. And like the the husbands, they're like, oh, I didn't know polygamy was illegal, you know, in court. They say stuff like this. It's bizarre. But they don't get officially married, right? And they they get you know married celestial marriage they call it in front of the church and so and then they live together with the husband and whatever but um, there is an official paper thing and one time um, there was a when during well Canada had a same sex marriage laws for a while there now we don't again but um, for a while there they they made it so that uh, girls get married to each other and so his two of his wives this guy's wives um in the mormon church he, they married each other so that they wouldn't get deported back to the u.s because they were facing deportation because they hadn't filled out the you know the i don't know whatever and so they they married each other under the same sex laws in canada even though they were actually you know a supposed like polygamous marriage to this other guy bizarre stuff anyways 
Um, just goes to show how messed up the whole situation is. And another thing is the, the law that gives the Charter of Rights and Freedoms law in Canada that was uh, brought in, this was the same guy that brought in um, abortion, making abortion legal, making uh, uh, all kinds of things like that, uh, you know, revoked the sodomy laws at the same time. This was all happened at the same time. And uh, this is how the gay rights, they say, oh yeah, well we have, you know, we should be able to do this and whatever. And um, they, they use the same laws for all that as these polygamists do. They're, they're, it's very much the same thing, the Charter of Rights and Freedoms in Canada. It's, it's basically to give anyone uh, of any age the right to... Um, act however they want, not according to a universal law or any kind of code of conduct, but so that anything is, um, uh, and it makes it, it makes it basically makes it illegal for you to say, no, that's not, that's not right conduct to someone else. And so it, it makes it really difficult. It's, it's a really bad thing that my grandma, she says, oh, it should have been called the Charter of Rights and Responsibilities instead of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, you know. And this is an interesting point, is that the, there, we've had um, a lot of people, like girls fleeing from polygamous, forced polygamous, polygamous marriages in Africa, and they've gained refu refugee, refugee status in Canada to get away from polygamous, polygamy in Africa. And uh, or other places, but the ones that are coming from the Mormons, they can't they can't get refugee status. The, the police won't deal with it. It's really funny. It's like it's like a totally different thing. It's the exact same bad situation, but it's different because it's coming from within our culture. Um, so we see it as I don't know. It's just different for the somehow the law enforcement, the the refugee board or something sees it different if they're coming, you know, trying to gain refugee status into Canada, say, because they're trying to flee a polygamous forced marriage in, like, these really are forced marriages for ch of children. And they're, you know, sometimes they try to flee and, and they have trouble getting refugee status in Canada because Canada is still controlled by Mormonism, I guess. I don't know. I mean, I did a video on, on, showing the two Mormon churches on University of Calgary campus, like I live in Calgary, and uh, there's no other churches around, There's, but there's two Mormon institutions on the University of Calgary campus, which is, what? why is that? You know, they all have under, underground bunkers too. The Mormons are known for that, and I'm sure there's underground facilities in uh, the University of Calgary. How much do they have, have an influence in Calgary? I think it would probably be pretty um, surprising if we found out. Here, at the heart of their complaint is the belief that in the name of religion, fundamentalist Mormons should be allowed to do exactly as they please. As if to prove this, black Mormons' wives confidently cited this religious freedom as their constitutional right, guaranteed in the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. And it's interesting how much money they get from the government. I mean, in Canada and in the U.S., there are a lot of um, strange things about how they get uh, grants, government grants, or, um, you know, child benefit type things. They twist it, they, you know, the whole um, child tax benefit or whatever to make, make it the maximum amount. Because, for instance, all the wives can say, oh, yeah, I'm a single mother, and then they get huge amounts of money. Right, but then they're all living under the same roof, right? They don't need all that, and so th there's a lot of that going on in the more in this in this community, like the Mormons, and because of their belief, like in uh, racial things, like black people are evil and blonde hair, blue eyes. Like a lot of them have blonde hair, blue eyes, or blonde hair, green eyes, and um, they're they're prized the the, the blonde you know, blue eyes are prized by the Mormon church, um, which makes me think, you know, this could be a lot to do with the extraterrestrial agenda. I mean, Utah has the second highest 
UFO or third highest UFO sighting rate in in North in Indian US. And so you think, oh well, maybe there's a big connection. Hello, <laughs> right between um, the fact that the Nordics, the blonde hair, blue eyes, are seen with the Greys and reptilians in every alien abduction story. You know, all the all the people say, yeah, there were gray aliens, there were reptilians, there were insectoids, and then there were the Nordics. You know, the blonde hair, blue eyes, working right beside the Greys. So. I don't think this is a coincidence, and I don't know how the Mormon Church is exactly connected, but I wouldn't doubt that it is. And I wonder, really wonder, if there isn't a that isn't the absolute reason for the NSA putting a supercomputer in Utah. Just to wrap up, it not only is like in British Columbia, this is um, a big Mormon spot for this. Uh, they use child labor, and when when the school is out twelve. Or, Children 12 and older can get out as many as 40 hours a week. Not only that, children under 12 can work if an employer gets permission from the BC Employment Standards Director. Not only does uh, British Columbia have fewer restrictions for child laborers than most of the jurisdictions in, in the developed world, the BC government made hiring children more attractive in 2003 when it instituted a training wage that is $2 an hour less than the going rate for adults. The BC government also eliminated many, many of the restrictions on where children can work. It's legal for children to work in mines in British Columbia as long as they're trainees. The only jobs that the Workers' Compensation Act forbids children under age 15 and under from doing are mixing and loading and applying toxic pesticides or working with explosives. Apparently, serving alcohol is more dangerous than children were handling time. Might and uh, this guy Harold wrote to the Quest and RCMP urging them to investigate the crimes being committed in Bountiful, British Columbia. Everything but the crime of polygamy, polygamy that is. He likened the F. Uh, 